Thanks, guys. Such good worship. Even though I didn't know what to do with my body with most of those songs. <laughs> it was awesome. Hey, I was just really touched by that last song. Hey, you know that there's a, you know, God has a promise on, on each of our lives. And, and um, I couldn't help but be struck by that reality. You know, I walked into this church such a wreck. So many years ago, hey, I was like a weeping mess on these chairs. I was a, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. And um, I just know the reality of that truth, that God has a promise on our life. And, and I just believe that for everyone in here, that God has a promise for your life. And it's, and it's for good. It's for good. <sighs> anyway, let's move on. I just want to pray before we... Before we get into the night, and, and who's been enjoying this encounter series? Yeah. yeah, it's been so good, isn't it? Just, you know, intentionally coming to God, looking to encounter, uh, to have an encounter with Him, and um, it's been so good. And, and I just want to put something before you tonight. I want to invite you uh, to say this prayer with me, um, and it's just a prayer of surrendering our mind, will, and emotions over to the Holy Spirit tonight. And allowing him to say whatever he needs to say to you and to do whatever he needs to do in your life. But I don't want you to pray that prayer lightly. You know, if, if you really mean it, then I want you to pray it with me. Because when we give the Holy Spirit permission, he loves to come crashing into our life and do things. So I'm going to invite you, if you want to uh, pray that prayer with me, you can just repeat after me. Uh, Heavenly, Father, Heavenly Father, I submit, I submit. my mind, will and emotions into your hands tonight and Holy Spirit I welcome you to come and do whatever you want however you want in Jesus name Amen Amen cool oh, I'm excited <laughs> you know many of you know like I just said I was, a, I was a drug addict I was an alcoholic and I didn't grow up in a, in a Christian home. I didn't go to church every week. It wasn't a staple in, in my life. And you know what? I think for me that was, that was a good thing because when I came to, uh, when I approached the Bible and, and reading the scriptures, I didn't have any sort of tradition or any sort of mindset or anything that I had to fit into the, into the scriptures. I just thought if it's true, then it's all true. And uh, I'm just going to take the word at the word, you know. And um, I, I was aware of a spiritual reality, though. I, I had had some uh, sort of, you know, encounters with some dark things in my growing up. I lived in some demonized houses and I had experienced some pretty unkind stuff. So, so I was open to the supernatural and, and the spiritual realm, the, the reality of a spiritual realm. And... Um, you know, I think, I think at some point in people's lives, whether you're an atheist or not, they, they, they probably cry out to God at some point. And I think in my life I'd cried out to God, but I didn't know who God was. I didn't know, you know, who he was or what he, you know, what he was about. But I had cried out to him before. And, um, you know, but I remember distinctly the very first time that I really cried out to God with an open and honest heart. And it came off the back of this conversation with my mum and um, she just said something so simple, but it was just so life-changing to me. She, you know, I was, I was reading the scriptures and I was exploring Christianity. And she just said to me, Anton, if you want to know if God's real, just ask him. And it was like, just this like simple but profound thing. And I remember going into my room that night and just, and just asking that simple statement of, of God. You know, I said in my mind, I just said, God, if you're real... I want to know the truth. And, you know, as I lay there in my bed, I felt the shiver run down my spine. It was just so, um, just weird, actually. But it was, I, I remember it distinctly. And then, you know what happened after that? I started to, I, I continued to read the scriptures and things. And, and you know, I was a pretty hardened person. I'd, I'd just got out of jail and I'd seen some pretty crazy things just on the street and in my life. And, and my heart was pretty, pretty cold. But I remember like, I was struggling to sleep and things and I was up at night and I'd see like a World Vision ad or something like that and I'd, I'd get emotional about it and I'd be like, wow, what is that? What's, what's going on? And then there was some other things that would start to happen, like I'd start to ask questions about things in my mind and then the answer would come 
and, you know, I was searching the scriptures and reading. And I thought, oh, if I'm going to find out about Christians, I should probably go to a church. And literally the next day, this uh, friend of the family rocks up and she's like, oh, I just seen this um, sign for a church. And it was just like, oh, what? Is she like reading my mind? It was really weird. And then I came along and it, and it was this church. So I had these kind of things start to happen after I had this open dialogue with God and asked him if he was real. You know, as I was reading the scriptures, though, I was really, I, I was, pulled, my heart was pulled at by just the life of Jesus. You know, he lived this radical life. He was so different to anyone I'd ever read about, you know. And the disciples and the life that they lived, it was, it was challenging and it was intriguing. And, you know, it just stirred me. And the whole element of like power you know, you can't flick through that book without coming across supernatural things and powerful things. It was like, it just pulled at my heart. You know, I continued on this journey of being discipled and, and reading the scriptures and coming to church. And, and I made a faith decision with Carlos here at McDonald's. And um, I also, you know, like I got water baptized. And all these things I did, um, but they were subtle. They were like subtle things like... Like God was obviously at work in my life, but they, they were these kind of subtle things that led me to each of these next stages of my faith journey. So I still had this question in my mind, right? I still had this nagging thought, like if God, is this real or is this just social change? Like, am I just hanging around good people with, you know, well, good people, um, with good morals and that sort of thing. And that's why I'm feeling different and that sort of thing. I still had that question in my mind. But I'd heard about the Holy Spirit. And, um, and one thing I could say, my mum, you know, she, she used to pray over me in tongues as a kid all the time. I remember that. But she had an interesting faith journey uh, as well. But um, anyway, off topic, I, I just, it was a subtle thing. And I'd heard about this Holy Spirit, right? And so I, in the, in, I got baptized in water. And then after that, I was having these kind of weird moments where I would try to pray at night out loud. And my mind would just go blank. It happened a few times. And I felt like this heat in my throat and, and this warmth in my mouth. And then, and then nothing. And then I just felt like this, whoa. And I can tell you, for me at the time, it felt like a hundred times better than drugs, right? That's how I associated this feeling because that's, that's what I knew. And this thing was like, whoa, that was like a hundred times better. What was that? And so I was asking questions and people were just saying, keep pushing in. You know, I had people fasting for me and praying for me uh, for the Holy Spirit. And then a month to the day, I, I was up the back over there and I can't remember what the message was about. And I just felt compelled in my heart to come to the front and receive prayer for the Holy Spirit. And I spoke to whoever was down here and I said, I, this stuff's happening. I feel like it's something to do with the Holy Spirit, like whatever that is. And um, they're like, well, we'll pray for you, you know? So they all lay hands on me. And this was like the first time I'd ever had anyone lay hands on me like that. Like it was a new experience for me. And they're all praying in tongues over me and, and, and laying hands on me. I remember walking out of there just feeling like, well, that was weird, you know? That was pretty unusual. And um, I went home though that night and when I got home, again, just in my heart, in my, in my soul, I just felt compelled to get, get on my knees and pray. And, like I'd never done that before. So I'm on my knees in my bedroom and, and I'm like, I don't know what to pray. And then just the words that they were praying over me that day just came back, you know, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And as I said that, on the third time I said that out loud, it was just like, boof, like this explosion of like, heat and warmth and energy just just rushed through my body and I began to shake and and I began to speak in tongues and it got louder and louder and like when I stopped I was like physically shaken I tried to get up and I was like whoa jelly legs I went to the door and as I opened my bedroom door my mum was there and she was like you got it didn't you and I was like oh, I did and I just cried I cried but you know I cried because like just my whole paradigm in that moment had been totally flipped. It's like everything I read in that book and, and the way that the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples in the book of Acts and the way we see people receive the whole, it was just like, if that's real, man, then the rest has got to be real. And it was like confronting for me because in that moment, I knew there was things wrong in my life. You know, I was like, man, if God is real, then some of the stuff that I'm doing is not good. 
you know? And so I cried and I was like sitting on my mum's bed for ages saying, God's real. And I think after like half an hour of saying God's real, she's like, I know. Um, I know this. <laughs> anyway, I went back into my, my bedroom and, you know, it was like this euphoric feeling that I was, you know, still had. And I, I sit in my bed and this is the part that I usually don't tell people about. But in my bed, I, I felt this presence come and sit on the bed. And I watched the blankets move as I felt this presence sort of coming over my body. And I sort of like kicked the blankets, was like, well, this is a bit weird. And then it, it happened again. And then it's hard to explain. I wasn't asleep. It was like I saw in the spirit, but I, I, I saw it. Like it wasn't a dream. I saw it, but I saw this big demon like reach over me. And it was like big and long and its hand was way bigger than my head. And it, and it hand went and grabbed my face. And as it grabbed my face, it was like I, I opened my eyes, but I was never asleep. And, you know, in that, I, I, looking back, I, I just totally believe as the Holy Spirit filled me like that he just broke something off my life you know and this thing was just trying to freak me out you know it was this incredible experience and you know I just say all this because my my introduction to God you know was this introduction to a God of power you know a God of power who could do incredible things incredible things he was he was powerful he was supernatural I'm way past that um <laughs> And you know what happened? After that, for like months, literally like two months, every night I was just praying in tongues. And every night as I prayed in tongues, I felt the presence and the power of God come. And I, I would shake and I would cry and I would just be a mess on the floor by myself in my bedroom. And, and I really think some deep healing was taking place. But, but it was full on and it was intense. I remember actually doing Alpha in, in one of the back rooms here. And, and they're like, um, all right, we're just going to pray for healing for this person. And I was just sitting in my chair quietly. I didn't go over and I like did not to pray so I just started praying in tongues softly and then it just got louder and louder and I was like oh shaking it and everyone's like oh I think you need to see the pastor about what's happening to you I was like oh yeah I think I maybe do too <laughs> and it was just intense it was this just for a long time for a few months I had this experience wherever I prayed in tongues I would experience the presence and the power of God it, it was it was amazing it was amazing. And, and, you know, God has just marked my life like that with, with an encounter with his power. And, and I've seen and experienced the power of God at work in me and through me for others. And I'm a, I, I'm a huge believer. I'm so passionate that that is the reality that we can all live in. If God can use someone like me and he can take this guy and, and he can use me, then he can use any one of us, any one of us. I totally believe that, that God commissions us as believers to go out in power and it's actually for all who believe. It's not just for a pastor or the evangelist. It's like literally for every believer, this reality of the power of God. You know, the Great Commission, it says in, in, in Matthew 28, it says, uh, you know, teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And, you know, when we look back at the life of Jesus, what, what did he teach the disciples? He went around preaching the kingdom and demonstrating the kingdom through healings and, and casting out demons and healing the sick and raising the dead. He did these amazing things. And then in, you know, Matthew 10, 5 to 7, he, he sends the 72 out and he says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely give. You know, this is what Jesus taught the disciples. So so we come back to the Great Commission and he says, teach them everything that I've taught you. And so, I mean, I just, in my mind, that means everything, you know, it means everything. And so, you know, that's what I really believe that the book of Acts and, and, and the, the life of the, the disciples is is what we can live out. You know, I think the disciples took Jesus at his word. You know, you see it in, in Acts. They wait for the Holy Spirit. And, and then in Acts chapter 2, Peter gets up and he preaches this message after receiving the Holy Spirit. And, and about 3,000 people are saved. And I think that's probably a conservative number. You know, I reckon. And then, you know, straight after that, what do they do? It's like um, Peter and John, they go to the temple and there's a man who's crippled and they say, you know, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus, rise, take up your mat. It's like, man, they just took Jesus at his word and they went with it. They ran with it. It's incredible. And I believe that's the, that is what is available for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. 
1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, let love be your highest goal. And you know, that's where we've got to start is with the love of God. You know, God first loved us. You know, even when we were sinners, even when we were messed up and broken and far from him, he loved us. And that's got to be our beginning point is like, man, this is an expression of the love of God. You know why? Because God loves the world. He loves the world. But he goes on to say, but you should also desire the special abilities that the Spirit gives, especially prophecy. And we heard Pastor Fergus talk about that last week. But, you know, he wants us to eagerly desire. Means like to, like to be eager about these things, to seek after them, to search them out, to look into them, to want them active and available in our life, in our life. And, you know, I love what Carl was saying this morning about it starts with the Father. It starts with intimacy, you know, and identity and knowing who you are as a son or a daughter. And as a son or a daughter, you receive an inheritance. You know, you receive the inheritance of the kingdom. And that's where it's got to begin, you know, out of your intimacy and identity with God. And, And then it's through that to the world, you know, to the world. And that's what I've... I've looked to do in my life is cultivate just room for God to cultivate intimacy with God and then help others to receive that same thing you know to pass it on freely you, you've been given for, you know freely give I just want to share a few stories um, you know I remember one time I was moving house and, and I, I, I went and uh, this was before I was in, you know in ministry I was just moving house and this young Islander boy came out to help and and I noticed that he had a hearing aid, you know, and it just pulled at my heart, you know, like, I just want to pray for that guy. And so right then and there, like, while we're moving, you know, I just said, hey, man, like, what's going on there? What, what's this? And he's like, oh, hearing aid. And, you know, he had it since birth. And I just said to him, man, can I just pray for you right now? And he said, yes. And so I prayed for him. And then we tested his ear. He took it out and he could hear. He could hear when he couldn't hear before. And, and that was amazing. That was just like moving house, just on the street like there wasn't an organ playing you know there wasn't any special music or motivation other than man i saw this guy and i felt the love of god for him and i wanted to pray for him and so i pray you know i went to um one time my my brother he's he's not a believer him and his his girlfriend text me one day and they're like our kids have been waking up every night at the same time screaming there's something going on in our house we saw this figure um move through the walls the other night and we're freaking out and, and they just thought, well, I probably know something about that. I don't know why, but they did. And they, um, and they text me. And I remember getting in my car and driving down there, and I'm like reading all these scriptures, and I'm like, I'm going to go anoint this place with oil, and I'm just going to be like reciting scripture, and it's going to be this awesome battle. And I'm thinking this the whole way, and I'm praying in tongues, and, and I get down there, and I pull in the driveway, and the Holy Spirit just says to me, why don't you just tell them about me? And I was like, oh. Oh, game changer. Okay. All right then. And so I go in there and instead of like, you know, going in with what I thought, I just go in and I start to share about, you know, God is supernatural. He's powerful. And, you know, he, 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 he comes and he changes our circumstance in an instant. And, and I just shared with her about the Holy Spirit. And, and I said, you know, just put your hands out like this. And she put her hands out and I just hovered my hands above hers. And I just prayed for the Holy Spirit to come. And as I asked the Holy Spirit to fall, my hands started to shake and her hands started to shake and she started to tremble and she just fell to the ground. And then she sort of like got back up and just started crying. She was like, "Ah!" she says, I've never experienced anything like that. That was so amazing. She's like, that was so amazing. What was that? And I'm like, that's just the spirit of God. And and, And straight out of that, I said, you know, you can have the spirit of God live inside you. Would you like to receive Jesus? And I got to pray for her to receive Jesus. And I said, man, when you've got Jesus, you've got authority and you don't have to worry about this stuff, you know, this scary stuff that's going on in your house. You can just tell it to be gone. And so we chatted some more and and she received Jesus. And a few weeks later, I wasn't there, but a few weeks later, she went and got baptized at a church down on the beach on the Gold Coast. It was amazing. You know, just the power of God fell and changed a circumstance, a whole life in a second. You know, you, you heard about Mark the Biker a long time ago. I did a little thing, but this guy was a lifetime member of the Common Chiros, and, and I met him at this table at a coffee shop, and I could see that there was something 
not right. He was, there was some sort of demonic oppression on him when he sat down. He's all beady eyed and he couldn't make eye contact and he was talking, talking, talking. And I just said, Hey, man, can I just stop you for a second? Can I just pray? Is that okay? And he's like, Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just bind every spirit right now. I command it to be still and silent. And, and that's all I said. And, and he just, water just started falling out of his eyes. He's like, Oh, oh, what's happening? He goes, Oh, what, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, Man, it's just God. It's okay, you know. I had to just settle him. It's okay. It's just God. And I invited him back to my house later that night. And my wife and myself and someone else, we just prayed for him. I just we got to pray for him again. I just said to him, man, God is supernatural. He's powerful and he can change your life in an instant. And and we prayed and he experienced deliverance and he experienced the Holy Spirit and he received Jesus into his life in my lounge room. It was incredible. It was incredible. One more story. I had a few, but I just one more. <laughs> you know, recently I was down in Tasmania, and oh, a few years ago now, but we, I got invited to preach in this church, like a 200-year-old Anglican church, and, and I sat through like the traditional service, and they did the candles, and they did the communion, and it was beautiful, actually. I'd, I've never experienced anything like that. And then I was invited to just share at the end, and I got up, and I just shared about this sort of thing, you know, that God is like, he, he's alive and he's living and he's active and he's doing stuff. And, and it, was, it was a funny experience because, like I said before, were, the music wasn't right. They had this um, lovely elderly lady trying to operate like an old 10-disc uh, um, CD player to play the worship. And it was like a scratch CD. She couldn't get it on the song. It was, um, it was quite funny. And then um, at the end, like I've said all this stuff and I'm like, Oh, so we're going to pray for people who would like to receive prayer for healing. And it was just like all these people were like looking at me, you know. And, um, and I didn't have that comforting music in the background. And um, this, this one guy jumps up, his, this Greek guy, had such a thick accent. And he had this, this thing on his arm, one of those plastic things. And he had cut his hand and he had severed some, some tendons in his hand. And he came up to the front and I was thinking, really, God? Like... You really? <laughs> this is a tough one, isn't it? Um, he came up, he had this, this sliced hand. He also had something wrong with his eye where he couldn't see, and he'd fallen off some scaffolding years ago and, and damaged his back. So it was like, all right. And so I just prayed, and straight away, his hand, he took the thing off, and he was able to make a fist straight away, close his, close his hand, and then pray for his back. His back was healed. Prayed for his eye. He had some needles, and they'd caused like, he, it was all these dots in his eye and he couldn't read properly and his eye got healed and you know it was incredible man it was an amazing experience of God just loving people you know loving that guy and uh, he was out the back doing the dishes later with his sling off doing the dishes it was a really cool experience it was a really cool experience but man I've eagerly desired to see this take place in my life I've really pushed in and and I believe that it's it's available for each and every one of us sitting here tonight, you know, to eagerly desire the spiritual gifts and go out into the world in such a way that, that we make a difference, you know, an eternal difference, uh, you know, just allowing God to use us. You know, John Wimber, he said this thing, you know, I'm just a coin in the pocket of God and I want to be spent. I mean, I just love that little saying that we could just be coins in the pocket of God and that he, we would allow him to just spend our life how he sees fit, that we would be people that say yes to the things of God. I just wanted to give you five helpful things, though, that, that I've really, uh, that have helped shape my life and helped me to push into this area. And I'm going to run through them fairly quickly. You know, the first one is that we would be people of the word, that we would read and reread the scriptures. As I said before, it's so jam packed with the supernatural and the miraculous. And it just, you know what it does? It, it, it instills hope in me. You know, when I read those stories, I go out into the world and, and I can have hope for others because I've seen, because I've read about what God's done before, you know, and God is the same today, yesterday and forever, you know, so it gives me hope. It's full of those sorts of things. So reading scripture, being a person of the word, especially the book of Acts. And then number two, I, I read other people's books. I, I read other people's books and watch documentaries, people who are, are moving in this way, who are pursuing God in this way and seeing fruit in their lives. I, I, I fuel my own hunger and desire to see those things by learning from others, by absorbing what others are, are, are happening in their life 
And so I read lots of books and, and I watch documentaries. Thirdly, I try to get around people who have uh, an expectation for this sort of thing. And again, I actually want to learn from them, you know? I want to ask them questions. I want to take them out for lunch. I want to write them an email. I just want to learn from people's lives. Like, what, what, how did you get there? What's been your journey? What's been your story? And so I pursue those things. I get around people, I ask questions. And, and you know what? I've even mimicked people, all right? I've even watched what others have done. And then I've thought, hey, if God can do that when that person does it, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try. You know, Paul said, mimic me as I mimic Christ. And so I just see it as the same principle. I see someone operating in a certain way. I give it a shot. And you know what happens? The holy, I don't try to be someone else, but I copy what someone else does. And in the process, the Holy Spirit helps me to find where my groove is at. You know, he helps me to find the way that, that it, it, it works for me, if that makes sense. So I mimic people, I learn from people, I get around people. The fourth one is I receive prayer and impartation. You know, I, I go to conferences, I, I get around um, people who, who, again, are doing these things, and I ask for prayer, I wait in lines, I, I, I wait to the end, I get up to the stage, I, I kneel, I put my hands up and surrender, like I actually pers uh, pursue these things, and I go after these things, and I ask for God to change me, and, and for Him to do more in me, and, and, and I respond, I respond to God. I respond to God. And I, I totally believe in impartation. You know, we see it in, in, in the scriptures. And we see when the disciples lay hands on people, something happens. You know, the Holy Spirit fell on people at the laying on of hands. People received giftings at the laying on of hands. Miracles took place at the laying on of hands. You know, something happened so much so that you had, I think it was Simon the sorcerer. He was like, I want to buy that. Like something took place at the laying on of hands. There is this thing that happens, this impartation that happens. And I don't get it. I don't understand it completely, but I know it happens. And for me, I've experienced that when I've gone up and I've asked and I've received and God has done something in me. And you know what? When I'm like on the ground or I'm experiencing the presence and power of God, I don't always understand what he's actually doing. Like I can walk away from that not being, not really knowing exactly what took place, but I know something took place. And I know I walk away with a greater courage and a greater boldness in my life. And the last thing is that I, what do I do? I, I'm not passive. I don't just sit back. And I think that sort of came across in going after impartation and things. But I don't just wait for God to, to like meet me in my seat. And, and I, I don't want to offend anyone, but I, I don't know anyone that is like pursued this by just kicking back in the seat and just waiting for God to show up in their life. You know, people who have ministries or, or see this fruit in their life, they have pursued God with energy and effort and, and, and they've gone after these things. And, you know, can God hit you in the seat? Of course he can. But man, I, I just know that there is this reality of when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. When we come close to God, he comes close to us. And so that's what I've done. I, like I said, I, I come to the front and I surrender and I, and I eagerly desire to meet with God. And, and I'm not sure that eagerly desiring to meet with God looks like that. You know, I think passion looks like something. I think joy looks like something. I think expectation looks like something. It looks like something in our life. You know, we need to respond to God. We actually need to respond to what God is doing in our hearts. And then when I, when I, I pursue that out in the world, you know, I, I go out into the world and I pursue it. And I could tell you so many occasions of where I have, <laughs> I have totally missed it or I have fumbled my way through something like I, I'm trying to practice hearing from God, like a word of knowledge and just said, hey man, do you have a problem with your back? And he's like, no. <laughs> Why did you ask? I was like, oh, yeah, see you, dude. Not ready. I didn't know how to explain my way out of that. Um, you know, I remember this one guy. This one stays with me. It's like scarred me forever. Um, it was at the cinema and, and we used to have church in the cinema and he was opening up for us and he had like a moon boot on. And I reckon I prayed for that guy like 16 times like 16 times in a row. And like, there was a time where he said, I've got to get, I'm like, yeah, just one more time. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until he said, 
man, I'm like, I need to get back to work, hey? And I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, cool, 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 see you, man. <laughs> and uh, it was so awkward, it's, uh, it's marked me. So like, I usually don't go for 16 times anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, so good. But man, God is good, hey? And, and you know, in all these fumblings and, and things, I've learned so much, hey? I've, I've learned when it's me and when it's, when it's God. And I, I've, I've learned to be obedient, you know, that... It's not about the results, you know. I just got to go with, if God is, is stirring me to pray for someone, I got to do it. And, you know, the rest is up to God. You know, the rest is up to God. And so that's what I do. Uh, yeah, you know, like um, just recently, I had some really accurate words of knowledge at our last youth conference. And, 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 that, and that was awesome, right? I had these really specific words like, does this make sense? Oh, wow, you know, and got to pray and, then, and just uh, prophesy over people's life. But, but here's the thing. How would I know if I had a word of knowledge? How would I know if I had a word of wisdom? How do I know if I've got a gift of faith? Or how do I know if someone will be healed if I do nothing? Yeah. How, how am I going to know? Like, I've actually got to do something. I've actually got to participate. I've got to co-labor with Christ. And I've got to step out. And I've got to pray. I've got to deliver the word. You know, that's the only way that you're ever going to find out if God can use you in that way. It's, we don't, we, it's just waiting to like, I'm going to have a word of knowledge, like just waiting and then doing nothing. It just doesn't happen. You know, we just got to, we got to be more uh, active. We got to just do something. There is actually something we need to do. Yeah, salvation is free. We do nothing. We receive that for free. But then the outworking of the kingdom of God, we get to partner with him. It's like we get to do it together. You know, it's an adventure. It's an exciting life that we get to do together. We get to do it together. Yep, we do. And it's good. And I need water. Ah. And here's what I, I don't do. I don't let circumstances. I don't let um, my experience or my lack of experience, I don't let those things determine my theology. Yeah. I actually, I just let the Bible speak to my theology. You know, I go back to the scriptures and I lean in and I, and I push and I seek God, you know, for answers. I don't know everything and I don't know it all and I don't know how it all works, but I'm learning. And, and, and when something doesn't happen, you know, I just go back to God. Man, teach me something in that God. Help me to learn more about your ways, your will, your works, you know? And so I don't get all twisted, you know, about it. Or, or, or I don't let an experience say, oh, well, that's just, that defines God and how he acts, you know? You know, Jesus promised that we would receive power. That was a promise, that we would receive power, that we would do greater things than him. And I really believe that that is all of our story. You know, could you imagine if the whole church, uh, you know, just really caught this in their heart and went out into the world? Like, you know, we can love and care for people and, and that moves people a little bit closer towards the cross. You know, we love and we, and we, and we pray and we do practical care and, and counseling and all those things. But, you know, the supernatural is like, it just, it, it takes people bounds further towards the reality of God, you know? They're, they're actually presented with like, wow, this is beyond my reason or logic. And, and so that's what I love about the supernatural and, and the way that God, you know, does supernatural things. And, you know, God is supernatural. It's not something that he just does. It is, it's who he is. It's, it's actually his nature. It's his character. And so you know, just a little extra bit there. Hey, uh, you know, I love in Acts chapter 2, it's uh, 17. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. All people, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit, even on uh, my servants, men and women alike. You know what I love about the presence and the power of God? That it is th this anointing, this calling, that it's for every single person. That it is for young and old. It is for men and women. It is for uh, you know rich and poor. There's no... It's, you know, it's for everybody, like all means all. And that means every single person in this room tonight. And we see it in the, in the book of Acts. We see young women prophesying and young women in leadership in the church. And, and we see it. We see it even today in, in our current reality that God ha has not just given his spirit to an elect few, but to all who believe, 
all who believe. And that's what I like about this story in Acts chapter 6 with Stephen. You know, Stephen wasn't one of the 12. He wasn't a super apostle. And he was, um, you know, they wanted to continue to preach and do their thing. And there was this sort of disagreement about, uh, you know, the, the breaking of bread and, and the widows and the poor being fed. And they, and they choose uh, a, few, a few guys and they choose them. And they say this about Stephen, that he was full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. This guy who was just living life, doing his thing, is chosen for this act of service within the church because he's known to be a man full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom. And then it goes on to say that he was known amongst the people for performing mighty signs and wonders, miracles and, and, and things. And I just love that because he's not one of the 12. He's just some dude. He's doing what sounds like a pretty mundane job right like just an everyday job like it could be somebody at the checkout it could be you know laborer it could be an accountant it could it could be any one of us but he takes this reality of the kingdom into the the stuff that he does you know into serving people he takes the kingdom of god and they experience god in amazing ways he also ends up dead, but we'll skip over that. <laughs> but he's not, he's not one of the 12, and that should, that should give us some hope and some excitement for us and where we are in our everyday. You don't need to be on staff at a church. You don't need to have the title of pastor or elder. You just need to be a son and daughter of the living God. And you can do what Stephen did. You can be known as somebody who's full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, and known to do mighty signs and wonders. Yeah, it is good. Is Ed's here? There he is. I just wanted to get Ed's. Oh, can we have a mic? Sorry, I didn't really prepare anyone for this. I just wanted him to share a story as we sort of get towards the end here. Um, and this is a cool one. Just, I just love, you know, the reality of the power of God and how he can change a life. And so Ed's, a few years ago, you used to suffer with a condition. Um, what was that, man? You can hold that, Mike. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I suffered. I was born, actually, with um, arthritis, which is, like, it's very rare for people to be born with arthritis. But um, I was born with that, and, um, yeah, that really affected just my day-to-day, -day, really. You know, I'm a young kid. I want to do sport and everything, and mm. I couldn't really. It was just, just holding me back. Yep. So you take medication for that, or yeah, I was on heavy medication. Like yep. Pretty much weekly, going into the, the clinic. Yep. And stuff like that, and all that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Not amazing. But what's about to come is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, what happened, bro? Like, um, what happened, man? There was this day here in the car park, and um, tell me what happened. Tell these people what happened. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, what happened is that, so we're on this, like, little camp, this, like, youth camp thing that we have for our school. Mm. And um, that day, I was, like, really not feeling it. You know, I didn't really take any pills, whoops, um, <laughs> that morning. So we did a lot of physical activity, and I was, like, really, it hit me really hard in the afternoon. We came back here, and I was about to get dropped off, and I was just, like, yeah, whatever, just trying to hold it back. And... And so I noticed I was limping a bit. And so he was like, hey, man. He just pulled me up. He was like, bro, can I pray for that? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Because every time I thought of arthritis, you know, so something in the back of my head, you know, people, you hear people like, oh, they're getting healed for this, this, and that. And then I'm here, I'm like, mm, no, nah, arthritis is probably too serious. I probably can't get <laughs> probably can't get that healed, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, in that moment, you know, I just, I just surrendered, you know, and I just took it. I took the shot, and I was just like, why not? So I got prayed for, and um, yeah, in that moment, it was instant, instantly healed. And um, I thought, hold oh, up, like, I got to test this. Like, this can't be real. And the only way to test that is to obviously go to the doctors and actually get them to check it out. And so, can I carry on? Yeah, I'll just say, like, when he was, you know, like, you just, I'm really trying to emphasize the presence and the power of God, hey, available. And that's what happened to Ed. It's like he, he, the, the power of God fell on him in the, in the car park, you know. And um, yeah, there was something physical that happened straight away. And um, 
now you can carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that did remind me. Um, yeah, I felt the warm sensation of the Holy Spirit, you know, it was just like up my back and it was so weird because I never had that before. And I even got baptized and I still hadn't had that before. So it was like, it's this strong presence, you know, and I was like, whoa, whoa. And I was like, Anton, he's such a powerful man. And Anton was like, God no, is no, a no. powerful God. It was man. God, yeah. God is a yeah. powerful God. Yeah. No. So I was a little freaked out. I was like, yo, Anton, man. Ooh. But um, anyways, I went to the doctors a few weeks after. And um, yeah, they just said to me, like, uh, Ed, I really don't know what the heck is going on, but uh, there's no arthritis there. And so, yeah. Man, that's so amazing. Like something incurable, totally healed. And so you don't take meds anymore and it's all gone. Yeah, all gone. I never so good. Never took them. That's so good. Yeah, praise God. Hey, that's a, that's exciting, man. Yeah, give the Lord a hand. Come on. Thank you. Hey, Carl, can I like? <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Maybe just not as as up tempo as as before. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, God is so good. Hey. And, you know, he's not confined to the four walls of the church, you know. He doesn't have to fit into any sort of mood or atmosphere. You know, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, we can, we can just make a difference in the world wherever we're at, you know, at any, any time, any place. And that's what I love about the Holy Spirit and about following Jesus. And I just want to finish with this thought that, and I think I've mentioned already, but the gifts of God are not for us. They're not for us, you know. God empowers us. He graces our life. And, and it's for the world. It's for this lost, dying, broken world. And I can think of one gift, you know, that is actually, that benefits us in some way. And it's the gift of tongues. And it's, you know, to lift us up. But why do we need to be lifted up? Why do we need to be edified? So that we can continue to walk with, with just faith and endurance and strength. And you know what I mean? So that we're not downtrodden, so that we're not shrinking back. So, you know, even that gift inadvertently is for others. So that we would be people of passion and people of faith. And that we would go out into this world and, and that we would make a difference in this world. And, you know, I've had it on my heart uh, in pre preparation for this message that, that the Holy Spirit wants to come tonight and and that he wants to actually impart something into our lives and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that we're gonna do a couple of things but the first thing is we're gonna go after this impartation we're gonna go after the Holy Spirit and and, and that's why I, I invited you to surrender your life and and allow God to do whatever he wants to do give him permission and so uh, we're gonna do that in just a moment can I invite you all to stand to your feet and here's what I want to do. I just want to wait on God. You know, Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And in just a moment, the Holy Spirit is just going to begin to fall. He's going to begin to fall on you. And, and, and as you begin to experience His presence, as you begin to feel and sense the Holy Spirit upon you, I want to invite you to come to the front. And, and it might not be everyone, and that's okay. That's okay. We just want to do what we see the Father doing. And so we're just going to wait. We're not in a rush. We don't need to get out of here quickly. We're going to wait for the Holy Spirit to begin to fall, to begin to stir on your heart. And so I'd invite you to just close your eyes and just lift your hands, extend them before you, ready to receive from God. And when you begin to feel the sense of God upon you, if your heart begins to race, if you begin to feel shaky or you, you, you begin to feel just His presence in any way, I want to invite you to come. As soon as you do, just come. As soon as you experience something going on in, in your heart, you just come and respond to God. Come and respond to God. And I totally believe that this is going to be a defining moment for people in their lives. That the Holy Spirit is going to mark you. You're going to, you're going to experience Him like never before. He's going to mark you. And, and this is going to be the beginning of something new and fresh in your life. New and fresh in your life. 
You know, there's always more when we worship a God of the infinite. There's always more. There's always more available to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Come. Come. Come, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord.